King Charles and Camilla. Narcissistic cementation. How it works. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. We narcissists invariably choose empathic individuals as our victims. This is because empaths have addictions to us, which makes them easier to ensnare and easier to keep ensnared. But other categorizations of people, normals, other narcissists and narcissistic people, can also be our victims. Those individuals, however, can prove more problematic to us compared to the empath. Normals, because they have no addiction, are more likely to see the warning signs and pay heed to them. Thus, whilst they could be relatively easy to ensnare in the first place, they're more likely to walk away at an earlier juncture. And all that hard work that we've put in goes to waste. Narcissistic individuals are similar, particularly self-absorbed and lacking the addiction. They also can prove problematic in terms of drawing them in and keeping them in check. And therefore, whilst they can be ensnared and, of course, can provide the prime aims like any other individual, they're not as a satisfying morsel compared to the empath. But there are instances where narcissists will come together. Many people think, how could that be, H.G.? Surely it would just be a proverbial shit show, resulting in people fighting with one another. Well, you're certainly correct that there are certain combinations of narcissists that come together that it turns into a clusterfuck. There's ignited fury all over the place, tantrums, and it's a hugely tempestuous relationship that's up and down and on and off and then may eventually blow up, only for them to come back together again and for it to blow up once more. Sometimes those relationships don't last long at all and they don't continue in any shape or form. But there are instances where two narcissists can come together and they stay together. That two narcissists come together and appear to work well together. That they seem to be happy. That they appear to have an enduring relationship. Now, bear in mind, of course, that there are many relationships between narcissist and empathic victim which, to the outside world, appear to be really good, solid, idyllic marriages. Why? The narcissist portrays a facade to the outside world, and the victim doesn't want to disturb that facade, doesn't want to tell the truth to the world at large about how they're treated behind closed doors, for fear of repercussions and ramifications from the narcissist. Therefore, it follows that if you have two narcissists together that both operate facades, then there is a likelihood that the outside world will look upon them and think, look at that, that's a coupling that works. They may not realise, of course, that the two individuals are narcissists, but the starting point is to understand that where two narcissists both operate with a facade, which they show to the outside world, it means that much of the outside world will then think, that is a marriage that's working, that it's enduring. They don't see temper tantrums. They don't see somebody storming out of the house at 11 o'clock at night, shouting at the top of their voice. It isn't the case that that couple are known for the police attending because there's been another bust up where they're both at it fighting hammer and tongs. You don't see any of that because of the necessity of the presence of the facade and its impact upon their behaviour facing outwards. Now, I have explained before that King Charles and Queen Camilla are both narcissists. I don't propose to go into all of the detail as to why that is, I know there are some of you who disagree with me. Well, you're entitled to do so, but you're wrong. There is the evidence that supports that they are both narcissists, and it's detailed and extensive. What I will do is tell you what type of narcissist they are. Charles is an upper mid-range elite, which means he operates with a facade, and he operates with a facade of superiority. 
He's able, for instance, to demonstrate to the outside world an apparent care for the environment, for history, for architecture. And the way that his narcissism functions, which came to him from his own father, the Duke of Edinburgh, enables him to portray this. But of course, we've seen the various behaviours, the tempers, the lack of patience, the arrogant remarks, and of course the infidelity that occurred. With Camilla, she's a lower mid-range narcissist, and she's somatic. But she also operates a facade, although it's not as quite as effective as his. The fact that these two mid-range narcissists operate a facade goes a long way to maintaining that outward vision that it works. You see, whilst there are empathic victims that may not wish to upset the apple cart, there are also those that break away because they're being abused and they wish to escape. But there are certain instances where the narcissism of the two participants, here Charles and Camilla, in effect recognises that the sum of the whole parts is better than the individual aspects of the relationship. It remains the case that they both must assert control over one another. After all, they are narcissists. But what happens is that because of the nature of their relationship, the narcissism is not only able to cause them to achieve that, but also recognises that the cementation of the two of them together achieves more than them being separate. Another example of this narcissistic cementation is between Bill and Hillary Clinton. Another example, albeit fictional, was Francis Urquhart, or Francis Underwood in the American version of House of Cards and his wife. The narcissism of Charles and Camilla necessitates the assertion of control over one another. This will be done sometimes through agreement that they view of an external influence coincides. I've explained to some of you in consultation that sometimes the narcissist will do what you want simply because it coincides with what the narcissist requires in its serendipity. That also happens between two narcissists. And actually, where you have the cementation, this co-alignment of their interests happens with a greater frequency because of the cementation that exists. This means that their narcissism recognises that by staying together and presenting a united front, it earns more from this. It means that they can control, or the individual narcissist can control more people by having this facade of a settled marriage. The narcissism recognises that by being able to present to the outside world that they're a partnership, more fuel can be obtained. It provides greater access to character traits and residual benefits. Thus, where two particular types of narcissists come together, the cementation occurs where essentially the narcissism recognises we are able to gain control over this individual and at the same time, we want to maintain the existence of the relationship because it actually serves a much greater purpose. Now, this is not to say that it is all rainbows and unicorns. Far from it. There will be instances where they will fall out. Charles may well be in a huff, and therefore he'll decide to go outside and speak to his geraniums. And Camilla will just think, well, I'll let the huffy so-and-so go. They also have the advantage that they don't necessarily spend massive amounts of time together because they have other demands upon their time, other commitments, other charities, etc. And those type periods of time where they're about other matters means that they reduce the risk of threatening one another's control. But essentially what occurs is that when it comes to an interaction between the two of them, 
the narcissistic cementation that has occurred acts like a form of glue, which means that whilst they can readily fall out with one another, that harsh words might be exchanged over the breakfast table, that someone might sit in a sullen silence, the fact is that disengagement is far less likely because of the cementation. You know from my other work that there are the five triggers for disengagement. Well, you would think that quite possibly these are more likely to occur when you're dealing with the more volatile narcissist. But the fact is, where narcissistic cementation occurs, it acts almost as a glue to keep the two narcissists together, meaning that if a disengagement trigger was activated, rather than it just go boom and occur, it has to pull against this cement that has originated. And therefore, the narcissism has evolved in a way to keep the two together because it's almost like a grandparent that comes along and says, look, you two actually work better together than you do apart. Yes, you'll fall out. Yes, you bounce up against one another. But they don't know that out there because of your facade. And it's actually better that you occasionally let off a little bit of steam by having an argument than fall apart. And when the narcissist one and two come together in this way and cementation occurs, it enables them to present to the outside world that facade. It also means that their relationship is far more likely to endure until death rather than one party disengaging from the other. The triggers, whilst they might be activated, are less likely to take effect. And that's the central aspect of cementation. That whilst they could fall out with one another, whilst they will exchange devaluing behaviours towards one another, to the outside world, none of this is seen, and there's no disengagement, thus they stay together. The narcissism sees that more can be gained by remaining as a unit than falling apart, and cements the two together. Accordingly, for Charles and Camilla, their forms of narcissism essentially recognise that whilst they have to assert control over the other individual, there's more to be gained by the two of them remaining together, and thus that is what occurs. Naturally, because they're both unaware narcissists, they do not think in terms of there being cementation. They don't think to themselves, we present a facade. All of that is done by their narcissism. But this narcissistic cementation has occurred between these two particular narcissists, which enables them to have an enduring relationship, which to those who are not in the know, appears to be a highly successful one. And in some respects, it is they both get oodles of fuel. They're both able to assert control over lots of different people. There are plenty of character traits and residual benefits that they gain from this partnership. But they will have arguments. They will have periods of devaluing one another. It's just that the world doesn't see it, and there isn't a disengagement that's going to be likely. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.